everybody, Mrs. Barry, Gronk, Max here. Can you tell by what we're wearing today and what we're going to be talking about in art? You're right, food. Max has his oven mitts, I have my apron, Gronk has his chef tat on. Boys love food, don't you boys? Oh, oh, keep it down guys, keep it down. Yeah, they love food. So before we talk about the artists that we're going to talk about today, I'm going to send these boys off to look for their favorite food in the kitchen, okay? So you guys can go through the cabinets and the refrigerator and see what you like the best, okay? What if you can't decide? Try to figure out what you like the best, okay? You want to go first? You want to be gone to the kitchen? Okay, Max. Off you go. <laughs> He's pretty fast, Gronk. You better watch out for him, okay? You know him. He can get in a little bit of trouble. All right. So the artist we're going to talk about today is Wayne Tebow. And I've already given you a hint, but if we look at his self-portrait, can you tell what he liked to make? You're right. Desserts, especially cakes. So Wayne Thiebaud was born in Southern California in the 1920s. Oh, hold on a second. Hey boys, can you keep it down a little bit? I'm trying to talk about Wayne Thiebaud here. Oh, there goes the refrigerator. I don't know what trouble we're going to have in there. Okay, so after high school, Wayne went off to the Disney Studios and did an apprenticeship. And he learned how to draw Goofy and Pinocchio. Now, he wasn't the artist that created Goofy and Pinocchio, but he would help draw the stills for the movies. So he did that until he was 21 years old. And then he went off to the Air Force, where they found out how talented he was. And he taught art for uh, drawing specifically in the Air Force for the soldiers. But he also made cartoons for the Air Force magazine. Here's a photo of him making cartoons for the Air Force magazine. So I've already told you that he liked to do desserts. After the Air Force, he went into graphic designing and he loved the layout in graphic designing. So much so that in the late 40s, he went back to school to become a fine artist. And in his paintings, you will see that often in rows or overlapping, coming back from his old graphic design days. So he went to San Jose State for his master's in fine arts. He graduated from there and became a professor at the University of California at Davis. In 1957 to 1958, he decided that he wanted to take a gamble and try to make it as a go as a real artist. So he went to New York went to all the galleries in New York and asked them to look at his artwork. He was dejected by every single gallery in New York City. His very last one he went to was called the Ellen Stone Gallery. Ellen Stone was the man who owned the gallery. He saw Wayne standing out by the doorway and asked what, if he could help him. Wayne says, no, that's okay. Nobody likes my artwork. I'm just going to go back to California and teach. Mr. Stone invited him in, said, let me see what you've got. He wasn't sure whether he had what it took to become an artist, his paintings did, but he invited him to have a show the month after he came to see him. And this made Wayne famous. You see, at the time, pop art was becoming popular. Pop art itself means popular things. Artists were painting things that were a popular society at that time. So if you remember fourth and fifth graders, Andy Warhol. Andy Warhol was an artist who did Campbell's soup cans because Campbell's soup cans were popular. Now Wayne didn't choose food because he thought he wanted to become a pop artist. He chose food because he went to bakery once and he saw a cake decorator making a cake and he said, wow, that process is just like paint, became fascinated by it. And that kind of developed his love of painting of food. These are suckers. But you can see pop artists did simplified objects and bright colors. Again, these aren't desserts. He didn't only do desserts, but the one thing that all of his paintings have in common was he would brighten up the colors a little bit more than realistic and put in the blue, gray, purple shadows to kind of highlight them. So here again, 
Pop artist did everyday objects. So he took a row of his wife's lipsticks, lined them up, thought they were beautiful, painted them, and also made sure that he had the shadows. Again, this goes back to his graphic design days where overlapping was interesting, leaving one fancy tie out here to make you think about it. This really helped in his paintings. This is one of his very rare cityscapes that I did. This was San Francisco at the time. Not as busy as today's San Francisco, right? But you can see he uses bright colors as overlapping of objects, purple, gray, blue shadows. So what am I asking you to do? I'm asking you to pick your favorite food. It can be candy if you want. It can be desserts. It could be something your mom fixes that you love a sandwich that you like to make. Think about it. You're going to choose on Wednesday. You're going to make it out of any kind of medium you want. Medium means what you're making the actual picture out of. Is it paint? Is it a drawing? Is it out of color pencil? Is it out of construction paper? You could even make it out of clay. That's fine with me. So I hear the boys coming back. Let me see what they've chose. Okay. Let's see here. Gronk, what do you got for me? Ugh. Let's see. A banana! I love bananas, and they have an interesting shape. Very good, Gronk. Okay, let's see what Max found. Max, how'd you get up here by yourself? Max, look at all the things he chose. Max, you're supposed to pick one thing. You couldn't decide? Oh, I'll have to help you later. I wonder what my kitchen looks like. You guys be thinking about it. I'll see you on Wednesday. Bye.